Hello, my name is Terry McDonald and um, I'm a local artist who lives here in Anacortes. And I thought today I would take you along on my journey becoming an artist um, and just a little bit about how you might be able to get started as an artist or with painting. Um, I'm primarily an acrylic artist, so that's what we will be talking about today. A lot of times when you talk with an artist, you will hear that they were, an, uh, they painted or doodled or did art all of their life, starting when they were really small. That was not my pathway. Um, I did have a father who painted and a sister who painted, so I was around it, but I really never did much. I doodled just a little bit occasionally when I was a teenager, but uh, never took any art classes never was really that interested in art. Um, my husband and I went on to have a career in the broadcasting industry and we owned a couple of radio stations and a, a bus advertising business in Port Angeles. And so we spent 30 very busy years um, on the radio, working at events and fairs. We put on home shows, um, things of that nature. And so I never really had time to uh, think about a hobby. We, had, we were raising our children. We were really involved in many community organizations and events. So having a hobby was actually not something I did. We decided to sell our radio stations and retire. And I realized quite quickly that I was going to need something to fill in some of those long hours that I was used to working with something that was satisfying. So I decided to well, give um, painting a try. I decided to start out with watercolor and I bought myself a little set and started just doodling around. Then I took a workshop and got a little more serious but uh, was struggling. Then I came uh, to visit my daughter who was living here in Anacortes and I took a class in acrylics from Jennifer Bowman. I went home, put away my watercolors and never looked back. Um, I was in my 50s before I ever picked up a paintbrush. I often have people who come to my classes and say, oh, I just don't think I can do this. I've never done any art. I can't even draw a stick figure. And I say, oh, good. We're not drawing stick figures today. If I can take um, a lifetime of not even picking up a paintbrush and then starting, you can too. Painting is really like riding a bicycle, learning to ride a bicycle, learning to play the piano. Um, it takes practice. You're not gonna be very good. You're gonna fall off. You're gonna hit some sour notes. You're gonna have some real duds of paintings at first. But if you persevere, all of a sudden, one out of 10, you'll go, hmm, I kinda like that. Or then it's two out of 10. And pretty soon, you're finding that you're really enjoying what you're doing. And so my goal today is just to help you discover if that's something that you would like to do. Um, it quickly, painting quickly became an obsession for me. And I sort of drugged my husband along with me. Now I couldn't have my art career without my husband. I call him my Sherpa. He um, is the person that uh, helps me set up my booths, whether I'm at the Anacortes Arts Festival or indoor art show or whatever. He wires and frames all my paintings for me and he's my moral support. I will be painting along and all of a sudden I'll hear this voice in my ear saying, now don't overpaint that, <laughs> don't overwork it. And he has uh, learned to enjoy art as much as I have. So it's become something that we can really do and enjoy together. It fills in a lot of our time and it allows us on an occasional basis to have that people contact that we uh, missed in retirement that we had when in our working lives. So it's really been a joint venture for us. And I know that doesn't work for all couples, but uh, it certainly has for us. So you think maybe you might like to become um, a painter. Well, 
it painting can be quite expensive but it doesn't have to be when you start out there's just a few tools that you need to get started and you can do them uh, fairly inexpensively and I'm going to show you some of the things that you might need to get started first and foremost and I can't stress this enough is you are painting so as with any any hobby or any job that you do having the correct tools and the best tools makes your outcome the best so no matter what you want to scrimp on please do not scrimp on your paint paint is the most important thing you can buy student grade paints at almost any art store but i would like to uh, say to you to purchase the highest grade paints that you are able to purchase to get started buy a small set but buy professional level paints one of the reasons is because they have a much higher pigment load so everything you paint will be more vivid will have more rich color and you will just be so much happier with the results i was fortunate i um when i started painting i was in port angeles and there was really only one place in town that you could purchase um, any painting supplies and i i didn't know enough to even look on the internet at that point in time and so olympic stationers which was the stationery store in town also had a quite extensive art department and they carried almost nothing but some professional grade paints. Most of them were by um, a maker called Graham. Um, they probably weren't as high a professional grade as some, but they were still much better than some of the student grades. So I started out with those and um, I have since moved on, but I suggest to you don't go like to Michaels and buy the, their least expensive paints you will not be happy with your results. So invest in your paints. I suggest using professional level. Now I primarily use three brands just because they are, I know their quality is good. And um, I have, uh, I like many of the colors that they have. And so that's what I do. The one that I probably use the most is Golden Brand. And I use a heavy body paint. It comes in tubes. This is a larger tube, comes in smaller tubes, and it does even come in a bit smaller tube. It also comes, and this is heavy body, but it also comes in fluid acrylics, which are just a the same paint, the same pigment load, just a different viscosity. This is a buttery thick paint and this is more fluid and you can pour it out. So it really um, is your choice and sometimes I will use one over the other but just experiment around with them and see which viscosity you like best. And I just want to show you that they do come in all sorts of sizes all the way up to a gallon. I also use Nova Color. Nova Color is not available in art stores. You have to purchase this online from, I believe it's novacolor.com, N-O-V-A color. And these are mostly a, a fluid acrylic, so they, they're kind of in between, in viscosity, in between the um, heavy body and the fluid. And uh, these are high quality paints. You can buy them in several sizes, uh, all the way up to a gallon. Um, they are less expensive than Golden, Holbein, and some of the others, but they're still a very high quality paint and you will find many, many professional artists who use Nova Color. Another um, brand that I like is, I don't think this is such a, most of mine is uh, getting down there right now, but um, hopefully you can see this. This is Holbein, and uh, these are a heavy body paint. They do have, they do come in a fluid paint as well. But I really like their heavy body paints. They're very 
buttery. They just go on so smoothly, have deep, rich colors, and I really like Holbein. Um, most of the time I have to buy these online from, from some of the various art supply stores. Um, another brand that is good is Ultrex. And um, this is a fluid Ultrex right here. Um, but you can find that um, at many art stores um, as well. Another thing that I keep, another type of paint that I keep in my repertoire is the golden high flow liquids, a more liquidy paint. It's more like an ink, has the same deep rich colors and pigments, but it's great for doing drippy paintings if you want a lot of drips. You don't have to have those because Acrylic paint is a water medium. You can thin it down using either water or um, what we call medium, which is basically the basis for all paints. Um, it's, it's what they add the pigment to, and you can use medium or water to thin it down and make your drips and, and or thin out your paint. So um, paint is so important invest in your paint and don't worry about some of the other things. Some of the other things that you will need are brushes and acrylic paints are very uh, hard on your brushes. When you're doing watercolor paints, you need some very fine brushes that will really hold the water. You don't need to look for that so much with um, acrylic paints and so I use these synthetic brushes and um, I have loads of them. I don't know if you can see them in the background here but I have lots and lots of brushes. I like some fairly inexpensive ones. Um, my favorite are Simply Simmons. I can get these at Tri-D or online. They come in many sizes and shapes. This particular brush happens to be a snap brush by Princeton. I like it. You'll notice that brushes have different shapes. This is a filbert. It is rounded. Um, this is a flat or also called a bright. And this is what I use most of the time. You can also get rounds and riggers and all sorts of other things. Um, I also kind of like these little brushes. These are just a craft brush, really. They have a nice little, um, I don't know if you can see it here, a nice little holder on it so it's comfortable to hold. And I like the synthetic uh, brushes on these. So these, uh, so invest in a few brushes. You don't need a lot to start. You do need to get one that's at least an inch. Don't make the mistake of getting all very small brushes. Um, uh, because you do need some big ones to do backgrounds. Um, I am a very loose and expressionist painter, so I try to use the largest brush possible to accomplish what I'm trying to accomplish. So buy yourself a few, a few brushes just to get started, and you can always add another brush or two every time you go to the, to the art store. A few other things that you will need are some palette knives. You can use your palette knives to paint, actually. You can also use them to um, dip into your paints and, and pull the paint out and put it on your palette. And um, so just a couple of palette knives. And you know, if you're in a pinch, um, the knife out of one of your old sets of silverware will work. But my actual favorite is um, these plastic, very flexible um, palette knives. You'll often find a lot of metal ones. Um, all different sizes of palette knives available too. You can also get some plastic scraper type um, utensils, even at the hardware store for not very much money that will work quite well as well. In fact, an awful lot of your painting supplies can be found just at the hardware store. Um, I even know some painters who actually use house paint for some of their paintings, particularly their backgrounds and things. It is acrylic paint and it works quite well. 
I like to always keep some of these uh, Secura Micron pens on hand just for outlining and a few things and of course a pencil. Uh, substrates. Um, there are many, many things you can do. And to get started, I highly recommend just using watercolor paper. Watercolor paper, watercolor paper comes in a few different thicknesses. It comes on tablets like this, or it comes in large full sheets. I, I usually buy the full sheets and then cut them up into smaller pieces if I need them that way. It's very inexpensive and it seems as if the paper is not quite as precious. So if you um, have a painting that isn't quite up to your standards, it just doesn't feel as precious. It also allows you to be more expressive because you're not worried about wasting it. Before I use watercolor paper with my acrylics, I always try to gesso it. Gesso is, basically think of gesso as a primer. And what it does is it just gives you a nice surface to paint on. Watercolor paper is absorbent and generally you don't want um, your acrylic paint to sink into the watercolor paper. Although as with many things in art, it's not a hard and fast rule. If you are doing a certain painting and want it to sink in, well, go gesso it. There are no rules in painting. A lot of people will think that there are, but really and truly, I think the, the what makes painting so much fun is you can be a two-year-old, you can just go for the simple joy of trying, experimenting, having no expectations of what's going to happen in the end. You just do it for the joy of it. Anyway, there are many kinds of gesso. Um, I happen to have two brands here right now. One is Golden and one is Daniel Smith, which is primarily a, a watercolor company out of Seattle, but they do have some other products and they make a very fine gesso. Gesso comes in white. Some painters actually use gesso for their white paint. It's less expensive than paint and they will use it for that. It also comes in black, which I use quite a bit. In fact, I buy the black by the gallon because I do a lot of paintings that start on a black surface. Um, it also can come in lots of different colors if you would like that. So I would suggest getting some gesso. It doesn't even have to be a container this size. You can buy it in smaller sizes and some of it can be a little different viscosity. Some is fairly fluid, some is fairly heavy body. It really doesn't matter. Gesso is just your primer, so just get something that will accomplish the job for you. That's one area where you really can um, perhaps save a little money. But I would recommend getting a small container of gesso to get started. Also, you can use canvases. You can buy canvases in a wide range of sizes, a wide range of price levels. Um, I would say to get started, just buy a package of prepackaged small canvases that um, are not very expensive just to get started. And then you can start upping your, your uh, quality of your canvases as, as your painting improves. Most of the canvases, the pre-stretched canvases that you buy, and by that it means that it's put on stretcher bars and ready to paint on, most of these come with a gesso already on them. So you don't need to pre-gesso your canvases unless you want to. You can, you can buy also canvases that are different depths. This one is a gallery depth. This is an inch and a half. This one is just a half an inch. They come in five eighths inch. They, you can also purchase an inexpensive canvas board. This is just simply a, a sturdy cardboard uh, that is covered with some canvas and then pre-gessoed. And this is an inexpensive way to have a very firm surface to paint on. It's a little bit uh, sturdier than painting on paper but it's still inexpensive to get started.
Also, another surface that I like to paint on is a cradled board. This is basically just a birch panel. It's uh, cradled. It has um, the edges and, and it's nice and sturdy. I do recommend you put a gesso on the top of this. So, I forgot to mention, I said I use big brushes. You can buy some wonderful brushes at the hardware store for not a lot of money and use those. Um, another thing you will need is just simply a water container. It could be any plastic container. You get your soup in or your uh, something um, at the grocery store. I buy these at uh, SIBO's. I like a nice large container so I have a lot of water so I'm not changing it all the time. I also recommend you get a spray bottle. Um, it is a water medium and a lot of times you'll need to dampen your surface and a spray bottle is perfect. Palettes. I happen to use what we call a stay wet palette. I like this because I can put my paint in here, use it, and then I have to go cook dinner. So I put this top on it. It's a water or it's a airtight top and walk away and my paint stays nice and moist. It stays nice and moist because it comes with a sponge that you can wet down and then there's a special paper that you wet down and put over the top of the sponge and then you put your paint on top of it. This works really, really well. They can be a little pricey, uh, but they save you a lot of money and wasted paint. But you don't have to have something like this to get started. You can purchase a simple uh, plastic palette um, that you then just wash off each time you do it. I think this costs $5. Um, you can buy palette paper, and it's basically just a, a tablet of papers, and you just simply, um, each time you're getting ready to paint, you put your paint on the paper, and when you're done, you toss it. But if you're really on a budget, paper plates work great. Um, in fact, when I teach classes, this is what I give in my beginning classes where people come in and they don't have any supplies. I just give them one of these paper plates, actually give them two, one for, one for putting their paints and one for using to mix. So palette, palettes can be very extensive. They can be very simple and you'll find other artists have different ways that they do it and that's what works for them. The Stay Wet palette is what works for me. I also always try to have a lot of rags around and a lot of paper towels. And I um, actually cut the paper towels into small pieces. Um, you use paper towels for so many things. I will often just use the paper towel to get paint on the canvas if I'm just toning the canvas. Another wonderful tool that I use every day when I'm painting is my fingers. They are a wonderful, inexpensive painting tool. I use them to soften lines. I use them to add color. And um, uh, I don't wear gloves, but you can. Another choice you can make. Um, I find I can wash the paint off fairly easily with warm water and soap. But if you are worried about uh, staining your hands or you're worried about anything, um, you can definitely wear gloves or you can put a barrier cream on. Um, then there are lots of little, um, oh, I don't want to forget, alcohol. And it needs to be the 90% alcohol. That will remove paint. Um, say you get a little spot on your floor or your table you want to get off. Um, painting's a messy business. Um, so that's why it's nice to have a dedicated area. But I soon learned that the alcohol will remove paint. So it's something to have. It's also a tool you can use when painting, but that's a little bit down the road. Um, also, there are many other tools that I just find around the house. Makeup sponges, I use those. Toilet paper rolls to stamp uh, wonderful little circles in. Um, this is from your um, uh, 
I don't know what you call these. They're under your rug to keep it snug and safe. Uh, sponges, credit cards make wonderful um, scrapers. They also make wonderful thin lines. So a lot of the tools that you can utilize in your painting can just be tools that you have around your house. Um, I thought I just really quickly show you just a couple of, of ideas on how to get started and get paint on your brush. And then that will be probably all we'll have time for today, but maybe I can come back another time and show you how to actually start a painting. One thing um, I forgot to mention is it's nice to have one of these tabletop easels. You can work flat on a table. If that works for you, that's great. Or to sl if you'd like to work at a little bit of an incline and have your painting up like this, one of these little tabletop easels, you can usually buy them for 15 to $20. So it's a good and expensive investment. You can often find them at garage sales as well. So one thing that um, you should always remember is always start with a slightly dampened brush. And that's where then I use my rag. I use my rags extensively. Then take some of the moisture out of your brush. And this is one thing that it took me an awful long time to learn. So I like to tell my students as, as soon as we get started that um, putting your paint onto your brush is very important. And you don't just simply dip into your paint and take a glob like, like say a big glob of paint like this. That's really not the way to do it because then your lines on your canvas will come out all kind of funny. So the way to get the paint on your brush, if I can show you here, is to simply work it into your bristles, back and forth, back and forth, till you have a nice, even amount of paint on your bristles. And then you simply apply it on your canvas. I often like to tell um, students to, with their first few strokes, to close their eyes. So first of all, we'll put a, just a slightly dampened brush. We'll put some paint on it. We'll, we'll go to our canvas. We'll kind of close our eyes and feel what the paint is doing. A lot of painting is feel. So feel how that feels going across the canvas. And when you look, that, that was, um, my brush was not very damp. It was pretty dry, and you'll notice I have this lovely broken line. And when I was painting, I could feel the brush sort of pulling along. So now I'm going to have my brush and water, just a little damper, put some more paint on. I'm going to place it here by the canvas. I'm going to close my eyes, and I'm going to feel that brush just glide over the top. And look at the difference that this stroke had with a little bit of water. So adding or subtracting water using a lighter or harder touch with your brush stroke can make a huge difference. Cleaning your brushes is another thing that you should be aware of. Um, this paint, this acrylic paint dries very quickly. So you don't want to leave it on your brushes for too long. If you do have it um, dry on your brush, you can always use Murphy's oil soap to get it off, but you don't want that to happen. So this is not the way to clean your brush. It leaves lots of paint on there and you won't be very happy with the outcome. You take another dip into a different color and pretty soon you have streaks all over your painting. So you get in there and you really work it good. You really work it and get all of the paint out of the bristles. So don't be afraid to really clean your brush. One other thing, and then I think that's all we'll have time for today, is 
I like to always start my paintings with a toned canvas. I like to use a warm tone. This is cadmium orange. I use cadmium red light a lot. And I start my paintings with an undertone of this. I also use black gesso quite often and start with a black canvas as well. But that way you're not fighting the white of your can <clears throat> excuse me, the white of your canvas. And um, you are, are able to sometimes leave little pieces of this nice warm color showing through on your painting and it gives it a nice warm feeling. So try to start, I know it's a little counterintuitive um, and it de does depend on what you're painting, but I would start with a toned canvas. So no matter what your style or what you think your style is going to be, um, I would suggest if you know where you want to take your paintings, Go and look at other artists who you admire um, and try to copy some of what they do. If you like um, abstracts, loose, expressive abstracts, look at a lot of abstract paintings. If you like something a little bit more representative but still kind of loose, look at a lot of those. If you decide to take a workshop, look at the work of the artist that um, is giving the workshop and oftentimes if it's work that you admire and work that you aspire to, you will probably get out of the workshop what you're wanting. One other thing I forgot, and then we will have to close for today, is be sure to get yourself a color wheel. They only cost four or five dollars, and you will find that to be invaluable as you uh, start trying to determine what colors to put on your canvas. I hope this gives you a little bit of an idea on how to get started in painting. As I said, I just started as a little hobby and it became an obsession. Pretty soon I was drowning in painting, so I decided I better start selling some. And suddenly it became a whole new career for me. Whether you want to just be uh, uh, just a new hobby for something to do or whether you aspire to be a professional painter someday, we all start someplace and I hope this helped you to find where you want to go with your painting. Thank you again, my name is Terry McDonald. Um, I live here in Anacortes. My website is www.terrymcdonaldart.com. That's T-E-R-R-Y-M-A-C-D-O-N-A-L-D-art.com. Thank you, I'll see you again sometime.